Yo, bro, why don't you pick up some groceries on your way back, all right? We're running kind of low, and don't tell mom, all right, but I'm broke. Son, while you're living in D.C., we have to set some ground rules when your brother comes to stay with you. I've been patient with you, Aiden. We need those schematics by 10 a.m. tomorrow, or else we need... Mark, it's your responsibility. Come on, Aiden. Aiden, this is your mother. Pick up the phone. Aiden, pick up the phone, man. Aiden, Aiden, Aiden. Aiden. Aiden.
This will be the plague with which the Lord shall strike all men. We are all that's left of a city beyond redemption, fulfilling our sacred duty to free the souls of the damned. Good to go up here! Mindset. That should hold. Father, forgive us. We shed this blood in the name of mercy. So what's your secret? How do you guys survive out here? You need to play to your strengths. I build, so shelter tops my list. London Patrol, London Patrol. You got to withstand the elements. No matter how unnatural. I think the key is hard work. When you add value, you have something to trade, and everybody wins. Hands down, the only way to make it is by putting lives first. You have to be tough enough to know what to give, when to take away. So what do you have to offer? Well, if you didn't have a weapons expert, you do now. Looks like we found ourselves a warrior. I guess we all have our strengths. Is this where you tell me the real secret is teamwork? Nope. The real secret? Aim for the head.
for nearly 4,000 years. An unspeakable evil was buried, deliberately and methodically erased from ancient Egyptian history. Legend speaks of a cruel and murderous dynasty, of dark gods and unimaginable barbarity. Disturbed from her nameless tomb, <coughs> Seteki, the Witch Queen, has risen again. Only one group of heroes can stand against the scourge of Seteki. The Strange Brigade! In a treacherous world of malevolent monsters and terrifying traps, four fearless adventurers fight for their lives, overcoming obstacles and puzzling predicaments, while keeping an ever vigilant eye out for treasure troves and lost relics. Unleashing explosive magic and obliterating ancient Egyptian horror. Join the heroic Strange Brigade! Jaws of Extinction brings you to the apocalyptic lands of Eden Nadir, in which survivors must endure and conquer the open world to outlast the wanderers. Alone or with friends, you will be faced with many tough decisions which will impact the world around you. Whether you choose to challenge yourself in the non-linear story or go off the beaten path, you will need to evolve your character and playstyle to survive. Before the outbreak, Eden Adir was a thriving community, populated by families and businesses, alive with commerce and industry. It now lies in ruins, but the people of Eden Adir have not given up hope. Jaws of Extinction has an expansive and immersive story. In single player, you'll be working alone to unravel the mysteries of the island. In multiplayer, players must work together to progress the main quest. In addition to the main story, random world events will also occur around the island. Strongholds may come under attack and need defending, or groups might put out a call for help. You can decide to tackle these events by yourself or work together with other survivors to increase your chances of survival, if you choose to help at all. How you choose to play will be reflected in our adaptive skills system, which allows you to develop the skills you feel are the most important. Whether you wish to raise your combative prowess to help defend against the undead, or develop your construction knowledge to build a better future, the more you practice an ability, the better you'll get at doing it. Traversing the treacherous land of Eden Nadir offers the perfect opportunity to pick up new skills, allowing you to evolve as a character. If you decide to work alongside fellow survivors, you'll have the opportunity to create flourishing communities, or you may decide to live in complete isolation. Whatever your choice, you'll be given the freedom to customize the area you live in. Whether you prefer to claim a shack out in the woods or build a beacon of hope for survivors, you'll be able to defend your territory against enemies with bespoke fortifications and traps. In addition to customizing your own home, you'll also be able to create and modify various tools and weapons with our integrated crafting system. Using items that you've scavenged from nearby cities or materials you've grown and harvested yourself, you'll be able to make vital equipment which will aid in your survival. The mechanics we have introduced to replicate survival are designed to mimic real life as closely as possible. Temperature, hunger, thirst, and wellness must be monitored and maintained if you wish to avoid the impeding consequences. Your survival skills will be tested even further with our dynamic weather and season cycle. Every inch of Eden Nadir's 67 km squared map will dynamically change as you play. You will have to adapt to your surroundings if you want to survive. Throughout Eden Nadir, you will come across various types of vehicles, from HGVs to SUVs, 
you will be able to customize and upgrade them to prepare for the apocalyptic world. Attaching defensive plows and reinforced armor will protect you from wanderers and rogue survivors alike. However, working vehicles aren't always easy to come by. Your transport will need to be repaired and maintained if you intend on mowing down hordes of wanderers. Within Eden Nadir, the undead will pose a constant threat. However, you shouldn't underestimate the living. Every type of character and creature you discover will have their own AI and will respond differently to your actions. To ensure your success, you will have to adapt your playstyle to each encounter. If violence ensues, valuable items or resources may be found on the fallen, which can aid in your survival. Jaws of Extinction aims to make combat feel as realistic and immersive as possible. You'll be able to defend yourself unarmed, as well as using a wide range of guns and melee weapons. To avoid a kill on sight attitude in multiplayer, we will be incorporating an integrity system, which will affect how players and NPCs will respond to you. Those determined to prey on survivors and ransack villages will build a reputation and will be much less likely to be accepted into safe zones for recuperation or trading. The funds from this Kickstarter will enable us to work for four months, up until the release of our early access. During this time, we will continue to develop cooperative play, as well as optimize the main map of Eden Nadir. All backers will receive instant access to the Jaws of Extinction prototype, which will grant you a snapshot into the world of Eden Nadir. For more exciting rewards, please visit the support section. The Know Your Enemy development team have been working incredibly hard to give you the survival game we've all been waiting for. We appreciate your continued support and look forward to developing the game with our community. nested with sin. Free them that they may know my the other apostate. Clip her wings.
demons are coming. Cut her down. She's one of them. Lev. your backs. Hello, I'm John Garvin, the writer and director, and I'm here with Sam Whitwer, I play Deacon St. John in Days Gone. Yeah, and yes. we're here to talk about the alternate path demo. So we did two demos for E3 this year. One you guys saw at uh, the media showcase, and this one we showed behind closed doors on, on the floor at E3. And so for the first time, we're releasing it online so that everybody can kind of take a look at it. And I thought I'd just talk a little bit about you know what the differences are um, and just kind of like just show you what we were trying to accomplish this year. Yeah, I mean, the most obvious difference so far is it's the last one was nighttime during the rain and this is daytime during the snow. Yeah, and that, you know, and, that, and it's not just cosmetic. And I think that's one of the things we really wanted to emphasize, you know, because this, this, this time we're showing sort of a day in the life of Deacon. You see he's on the drifter bike here. Um, we wanted to show a little more of the bike riding and how the weather can kind of impact that. So we yeah. have this drifting mechanic, right? You see right. him kind of slipping and sliding around a little Changes bit. Changes the handling of the bike. Um, that's really interesting. Now, there were wolves there last time, John, and these wolves would pursue you down this road, and then Deacon had to turn his back, shoot a wolf, and he got clotheslined, he got clotheslined. right yeah, up there, yeah, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, exactly. So this time you see that he wasn't being chased by the wolves. That's a dynamic event that can just, that just, you know, it's just a, that can happen or not. It just depends on, on when you're playing the game. Interesting. And this yeah. time Deacon saw the ambush and he was able to avoid it. So he kind of comes up and around and behind them. So does weather impacts whether these creatures show up or not in daytime, nighttime, all that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So especially the freakers, they come out, they're mostly nocturnal, but they will come out as the weather gets colder. They become stronger in the cold. Right. And so that will, you know, again, kind of change up the way the game plays. That's very, very... Uh, I, I kind of love that you decided to do this as a demo to show two completely different iterations on the same exact mission in the game. Yes, exactly. So we wanted to have, uh, you know, this. the job is basically the same. Deacon hears that his buddy's in trouble, mm -hmm. rides out to save his life, and, you know, as you can see here, this is a completely different experience from what we showed in the first demo. In the first one, Deacon gets clotheslined, um, and it sounded very painful, by the way. Oh, that. that looks, speaking of painful, um, okay, so <laughs> the combat in this game is fairly brutal. John, you want to talk about that a little well, bit? Well, we just wanted to make it as, you know, as realistic as possible. So, yeah, we're not holding back on that at all. Um, and, you know, and Sam's done most of his own stunt work for this. And I can tell you that when we're on the performance stage and we're capturing that stuff, we just try to make, keep it real, right? Right, right. Well, um, right. There, there was sort of a decision made at some point. What we we've, we've been work, I've been work, I've been on the project for what two or three years now. Yeah, I think three years. And uh, and so early on, I think there was a more, what were we? It, uh, it was more Kurt Russell <laughs> and sort of a two-fisted thing, and and then it, it turned into, hey, let's yeah. take this quite seriously. And what that required is a lot more taking this combat stuff um, and, and showing the horror of the violence that happens and, and, and it were this type of circumstance to take place. I mean, realism, weirdly enough, is the thing we keep going back to when it comes to the, not just the stunts, but also the performance style. I think, you know, it was very important that it doesn't seem like a bunch of actors, uh, you know, saying lines. It was yeah. all very incidental. 
and we want you know we wanted the world to sort of reflect that as well. So yeah. you saw there that you know Deacon broke into that emergency vehicle What's and this? found some supplies. So this is what we're calling our survival vision. Survival so you saw vision. that earlier when he was looking at Manny's bike on the ground, mm -hmm. um, and it's just kind of a way of, of seeing tracks in the world and sort of imagining what might have happened. Mm -hmm. And here I, I just wanted to point out that you're seeing in this part of the demo that there are freakers there. There weren't there before because yeah. it wasn't snowing. It was you know and it was getting lighter out. It wasn't getting darker like it is. And so, um, you know, it changes oh, yeah. up the way you can play through the level. And what is this? What is so, <laughs> we call this the meat wall. <laughs> the meat wall. Yeah, and it's not just there, you know, to you know make the guys who put them up to, to seem evil. They're there for a purpose because, again, freakers are living creatures. They eat. That's their primary. That's their primary thing. They want to eat. And so you hang these dead freakers up, uh, and it, you know, and anybody, any freaker, rather than coming into their camp like you see here, they would actually we'll stop. stop and snack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then the same thing with this freaker that they've hung upside down. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bear trap underneath it, and um, they use that because a freaker will come, be attracted to the meat, and then hit that hit that trap. Interesting. Another another thing you just saw, by the way, is that is that, that tin can the tin can trap that you yeah that's a, that's an alarm that the marauders will put up. And this is again some of the things that marauder camps just do. And you find these marauder camps throughout the world. You'll find traps like that. And then if you're careful and you're paying attention, you can avoid them. Because in the first demo, Deacon didn't avoid it and he set off that alarm. Right. Now, now this is the same tactic that he used last time. Throws the rock to get someone to lure lure him over and have him step in the bear trap. But this one plays out a little bit differently than last time. One of the things that, that struck me, and we've talked about this obviously as we've shot, but there's, there's an effort of the other uh, marauders to get this guy to shut up and he won't. Yeah, and so in the in the first demo, you, you Deacon's heading on down the trail, and you can hear that happening behind him. Right. And this time we're showing what happened. So, you know, he's watching everybody react to this poor guy trapped in the you know in that bear trap, and she just is like, "Shut up, shut up, shut up," and then just loses it and shoots the guy. Right. Right. And of course, in the meantime, Deacon you know is crafting a Molotov and just takes them all. Out. Right. Oh, boy, this dude. Ow. Ow. Ah! So yeah, so again, it's like in the pre in the previous demo, Dem Deacon would have gone off to the trail down to the right. This time he's going to head this way. He follows the tracks, uh, and comes under now, a sniper attack. Now Jeez. let me ask you something about the survival. Okay, there's a sniper attack coming, but uh, the uh, survival vision is if you don't say upgrade your survival vision, can you miss clues? I mean, are there things that, that you would get if you upgraded your survival vision yes. that, that would help you complete the mission better? Exactly, and. You have to, you know, we have a whole skill tree, and it's all mm -hmm. tied to the experience that you can earn as you're just playing through the game, and, and then you can upgrade those and things. What's happening here? We got a freaker tied to a tree. Yeah, so this is another type of trap that marauders will set. They will set, you know, they will basically chain freakers um, to the perimeter of their camps, and they use them as kind of an alarm system. Mm -hmm. um, and then that, you know, you saw that marauder there. He was just tormenting the poor freaker, and then yeah. so Deacon kind of take it, takes advantage of that. Well, and you think for a moment that Deacon is the guy, he's, he's sort of helping the freaker by, you know, getting the guy that taunted him. Is like, no, no. And then he's going to take the freaker out right afterward. Exactly. And this is a bit of uh, silent sniping using the crossbow. Yeah, so this whole sequence at the end plays out very differently. In the first demo, you saw Deacon use a swarm. He weaponized a swarm, lured them into the camp, and then they kind of did the work for him. There's no swarm in this run through. Right. So the player really has to go in and use what we're calling our strategic sandbox combat and that's just you know stealth mechanics and setting and using traps whole arsenal of weapons you see there's a variety of weapons that Deacon's going to use through this including the crossbow you know he crafts his own bolts um, and you know he's got to he's got to figure out how to get up to Manny uh, just you know using his combat skills right. instead of doing it strategically so straighten me out those those bonfires were those there in the previous demo no they weren't right so that's another big difference is that if you come here during the day you know it's like in the in the media showcase demo there was like kind of a fight club thing going right, on right they were they were punching each other <laughs> and everybody was just sort of getting into it nobody's really paying yeah, attention it, to what's it, going on yeah. and now it's getting dark and it's cold out so you know they've built these bonfires so you know, and again, it's just, it, it's not just a cosmetic change in the way the... Well, it's cold, right? Yeah, it's, they, it's because it's they cold. They have to build some... So fire, it changes right. the way the, the the marauders behave in the level. Mm -hmm. well, that's very... Again, this is part of the reason why I love that you did this as a demo, because the, the, the behavior of all of these things, not just the freakers, but the marauders, everything, there's a logic to it. You can track why they're doing the things that they're doing. Um, and you can use it to your advantage in the gameplay. That's that's kind of what I like about this so much. That, that and that's really what we wanted to showcase this year is that it's an open world game. 
and you know everything you see around here and again we're only playing this two different ways um you saw that waterfall way up there off in the distance there's a bridge that goes in front of that if you had a sniper rifle and enough ammunition you could have driven your bike all the way up there there's mm -hmm. trails that go all the way up there and you could have used your sniper rifle to take out this entire camp because it would have taken them a while to figure out where the shots were coming from and to get to you so you know that's a different way to play there's another way to play by the way where you could have just stealth in through the entire camp if you had the skills to do it. And you could have just taken everybody out silently or, or almost everybody. Mm -hmm. And then you could have gotten up to where Manny's being held using a different route and you know just stealth killed that guy. There's no reason that you have to come in and run and gun it like, um, like Deacon is doing here. Hey, how, how scarce is ammunition? Because I see him switching uh, from a bunch of weapons. And I when we saw this demo, when I, when I came in Saudi 3, one of the things that I that I really enjoyed was I was sitting next to you and the driver was playing the game and at some point I saw you shift in your chair and you leaned forward and I heard you say, oh man, uh oh. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on? He's like, he's gonna get killed. Right. I'm like, whoa, oh, <laughs> and, yeah. I, I, and I leaned forward. I was like, <laughs> oh, I guess there's some real danger. And one of the things was that he was running out of ammunition um, and he was trying to go pick up ammo yes. from the dead uh, He was looking for ammo, marauders, yeah. but but and he I've was seen, under fire. So when we were so. in E3, we had a whole team with us, and everybody played it slightly differently. So it just shows you that it's not scripted at all. Yeah. Um, and then this Rager bear. Oh yeah, boy. the infected bear. The infected bear. That's, yeah, yeah. That's not what you want to see. Well, that, we, thought that would be a, <laughs> we thought that would be a good way to end the demo, is to show that it's just one, for Deacon's life, it's just one darn thing after, after another. Yeah, yeah. Right? You're going to save your buddy. You get clotheslined, you get attacked by wolves, or, you know, you, you think you're finally done, you rescued your, you, you know, you've gone through all this stuff, and then suddenly, rage your bear. Right. Well, as, as you said to me, it's not just about exploring an open world as it is the open world coming after you, the open world seeking you out, trying to... Yeah, exactly. That's our tagline. Um, in Days Gone, you don't have to go seeking out trouble. The world comes for you. Trouble is looking for you. All right, Sam, thanks a lot. Thanks, John. It's been fun. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the demo, and uh, we'll talk more about it soon.